Um, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes about the demonstration that I was going to give, but um, it's probably better this way because with there's always technical issues with trying to do a live demonstration in front of a whole bunch of people that things are going to go wrong. Um, so I'll save some time so that you can um, um, have more time for Damien's wonderful presentation. Um, but I just wanted to state that um, in your in your list of PowerPoint presentations, I have a demonstration, basically a step-by-step -step guide of how to develop those cross sections that you've been looking at for your breakout exercises um, using open ground. Um, so who, who here has um, used software, any kind of borehole software to develop cross sections? Okay, um, who here, what kind of software programs have you used for cross sections? Whole base, okay. Blockworks, open ground, okay. Um, so, um, so these are some of the list of um, ways to um, develop cross sections that I have used or others in the core have used. Um, the cross sections that I um, showed yesterday from the ABIQ presentation were developed using GINT and MicroStation. Um, we're not allowed to use GINT anymore. I'm not sure if, I think Bentley is going to stop supporting GINT altogether, but um, I can't even get it on, installed on my computer anymore, which I see Jamie um, smiling that has caused us issues on projects. So now the core is started using open ground, um, which is um, another name for a whole base, which is another name for kin kinetics, I think. Um, so open ground is a um, database it, it, that's a cloud-based database. Um, and in order to develop cross sections, um, we have to use Civil 3D. Um, so for someone like me who learned how to do cross sections in MicroStation, it's a bit of a learning curve and it's not overly intuitive how to do it. But once you like know all the little tricks, it's not, it's not too bad. Um, so the, the instructions that I um, include in that presentation kind of give you a step-by-step -step process and show some of those um, little steps that are not intuitive that you need to take that will get you to um, show the cross sections the way you want them. Um, and one of those things is um, that I think is key is being able to show like the, the key data that you want on your cross sections. So a lot of, I see a lot of cross sections where all you see is just this graphic long with no data on it. So you have to know what the symbols mean to represent, you know, SM versus SP and all that, but no like data with it. And it's important, especially if you have a database um, to show like your blow counts your uniformity coefficient, your fines content, or if you're dealing with um, cross sections through rock, if you have RQD or um, water takes or grout data. Um, and so you can customize this all in that software. Um, so um, I think I will cut it there because basically the rest of this just walks you through that. So. If, um, with that, I will will end my little chat. Questions? Um, I have I have the question was: Do we log um, borings um, electronically in the field? Um, I personally have not done this. I'm very old fashioned and not trustworthy of a computer saving my data, especially if I'm in, out in the rain, but I know of other people who have done it. Um, and I guess one nice thing about, I think it's P-Log, I guess one nice thing about that is as you go through the, the, the tablet, um, it has drop-down menus that kind of force you to select certain things and log consistently, which has some benefit. Um, 
But I have you used that that. Well, but, um, hope it, but, uh, hope it's open ground. They are developing or have. We we're trying to move the vlog because it's owned by data forensics. Uh huh. The pointer is a subset of. Yeah, and so you can directly import your data into the database and that saves you a lot of time on um, data entry, which um, can be very time consuming with the cloud based um, database because it's not like 10 key where you can enter numbers and hit enter and, and instantly be on your next line. It takes like a second or two, which um, seems like an eternity when you're entering a lot of data. Um, any other questions? Okay. Oh, yes. Is there any effort to take all of the old Git logs and put them into the new software? I mean, like a big scale? Um, yes. Yeah. So um, the um, Geotech Cop or Geology, was it GGM? Geology and Geotech and Materials Cop at the Corps of Engineers um, for the last couple of years has been collecting Git databases from um, various districts. Um, and they're converting them into um, open grounds. So we have a very large database on the cloud right now. Um, I, Jamie and I are working on a new project. We got a Gint database from a contractor. I was able to send that database to the cop and they, um, like a, in a couple of days, they had it converted and uploaded into um, open ground. So that's, so that's what we're, we're doing. I don't know how long that's going to last. I think that contract's running out, and so we might be on our own for uploading stuff after. I, I don't remember. I don't remember when the date is, but. But. That I don't know. Um, so oh, I guess one more thing I would point out is at the very end of this presentation, I have a, a slide of resources. So here's some web links for tutorials if anyone's interested. Um, this is towards the end. Um, I'm not, so the first link is prob probably more applicable for um, Corps of Engineers because it's the website for our GGM COP. Um, the rest of the links are Bentley links that have training references. So if anyone has questions and needs um, access, um, they can, you can um, shoot me an email. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Amy.